thanks to the extreme popularity of the Instant Pot over the past few years, many, many people are falling in love with pressure cooking, and for good reason. Electric multi-cookers like the Instant Pot are incredibly fast and they're easy, and the food tastes great. Because the pot is tightly sealed, all the volatile flavor molecules stay in the pot instead of evaporating away. Juices concentrate and make rich, savory, built-in sauce. And bonus, multi-cookers have saute functions, so you can brown food right in the pot, so you end up with fewer dishes to wash. You don't even have to turn on the stove. Multi-cookers can be frugal choices because they can replace a handful of other appliances. They pressure cook using temperatures above the boiling point to rapidly cook food. They slow cook using gentle, steady heat for tender meats and rich stews. They cook rice and grains, replacing a rice cooker, and even make yogurt, so you don't need a yogurt maker either. And most also function as a steamer, and a few even claim to bake and to sous vide. Trouble is there are lots of brands at a huge range of prices, so which is the best one to pick? To find out, we bought 13 multi-cookers in both 8-quart and 6-quart sizes, priced from about $77 to nearly $250. And then we made a ton of food. We pressure cooked 13 batches of beef stew, 13 batches of Boston baked beans. Then we slow cooked 13 more batches of both beef stew and baked beans. And we pressure cooked 13 batches of white rice. Now along the way, we evaluated how easy the multi-cookers were to set, to cook in, and clean up and most importantly, how well the food came out. Now to understand our cooking results, we tracked the temperature of water in each machine at the low and high pressure settings for 15 minutes each, and the slow cooker on low for five hours. And when we got close to finding a winner, we pushed the top two models a little bit harder. We made pressure and slow cooked North Carolina style pulled pork, and we compared the results. Finally, in our very top contender, we made cashew yogurt, and since it claimed to also do sous vide cooking, we made sous vide soft poached eggs. Now first, the good news. All the multi-cookers did pretty well with pressure cooking. They turned out excellent stew and beans and rice with one exception, a model by Allclad. This pot never achieved a tight seal and it leaked steam, meaning it couldn't reach pressure and food never fully cooked. A second copy of this machine performed the same. Now we did find that our water temperature tracking test revealed that two models reached their full temperatures faster and stayed there more consistently than others, which we really appreciated. More models started to choke when we tried slow cooking. In fact, slow cooking has always been our biggest disappointment with multi-cookers. Who wants to wait eight hours only to find out that your food isn't anywhere near done? So where we saw uneven results in our cooking, our water temperature test revealed the reason. The temperatures of some of these machines fluctuated quite a bit throughout cooking and took much longer than others to reach their target temperatures. As a result, some of these models took up to two hours longer than higher performing models to fully cook beef stew and beans. One even hovered in the danger zone where bacteria can grow a little bit too long. That's between 40 degrees and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. That gave us concerns about food safety. Now the takeaway, how long a multi-cooker takes to reach its maximum temperature and how well it holds that temperature consistently is the key to well-cooked food in these machines. We also saw differences in how the machines seared or browned food. Now we've always known that if you can brown the food first before pressure cooking or slow cooking, the final flavors are much better. Now while these all have searing, browning, or sauteing settings and they kind of mix them all together so there's no consistency, they also vary from machine to machine in how well they worked. Some were hard to figure out. The best just indicated low, medium, and high temperatures on their controls without overcomplicating things. We also liked when models signaled that they were preheating and then alerted us when they were hot and ready to saute food. Sadly, a few of these multi-cookers had really weak heat and they barely softened the onion or browned the beef for the stew. We need real power at our disposal to make this function worthwhile. Now, aside from how well they performed, there were a few key ease of use factors that really separated the best from the worst. In general, we found digital screens were much easier to read compared to busy buttons, knobs, and dials. Next, very annoyingly, some of these machines don't let you adjust the settings without shutting down and starting over. Obviously, we really preferred ones that let us make changes in progress. And here's something to know. While most typical interior cooking pots spin around and drive us crazy when we saute and sear in them, Two of the models had pots that were anchored in place by silicone handles, and those stayed cool throughout cooking and made them really easy to lift. That's great design. 
On the bad design side, two models had big, heavy attached lids. Those just got in the way while we were loading ingredients or sauteing food. We prefer lids you can take right off. Another thing to check, the material of the cooking pot. Some were plain stainless steel, while others were non-stick coated. We found the stainless steel pots seared and sauteed more deeply and evenly, and they developed more flavorful fond than the non-stick cooking pots. The dark interiors of those non-stick pots also made it harder for us to see and monitor browning. But those non-stick pots, they're much easier to clean than stainless steel pots. It's your call about what you prefer. Finally, when you're pressure cooking, releasing steam is done two ways. A slow natural release that lets cooking wind down over 15 minutes or so, and a quick release where you stop cooking fast by pressing a valve that sends steam shooting out of the pot. And when you're used to it, I have to admit the jet of steam is kind of cool, but it's also kind of scary. And a lot of machines make you keep pressing the valve the whole time the steam is shooting out, and your hand is really near that jet of steam. You can use a tool like a wooden spoon to press down on the valve, but it's still a bit fraught. We loved a few models that use a simple steam release switch so you can keep your hands away from the hot jet of steam. This is a really nice innovation. Now, size. As I mentioned, we tested both six and eight quart sizes. Eight quart models offered larger cooking surfaces and that's helpful when you're browning food, like when we made stew, because we could brown the beef in fewer batches and saute the chopped onion more quickly than we could in those six quart models. The larger cooking surfaces in the eight quart models also brought liquids to a simmer more quickly and they reduced the liquids faster. But again, there was a trade-off. Those eight quart models take up more counter space. While we recommend you get an eight quart multi-cooker if you have the space, we did find that most six quart versions of our favorite multi-cookers were fine, as long as you don't mind sauteing or browning food in more batches. After two full months of testing, cooking more than 68 pounds of meat and 26 pounds of beans, we've learned a couple of important things. First, we never really wanted to see another baked bean, and we could really take a break before we ate more beef stew. But we also found our new favorite multi-cooker. It's called the Instant Pot Duo Evo Plus 9-in-1 Electric Pressure Cooker, eight quarts, and it's priced at around $140. This performed beautifully with both pressure and slow cooking, and we loved that its pot was equipped with those silicone handles that anchored it in place while we cooked and made it really easy to lift out. The stainless steel pot seared really well without nonstick coating that might wear off over time. Its well-designed pressure release switch, which is far from the steam valve, was really a pleasure to use, and its digital controls were easy to operate. While the sous vide function was a bit of a bust, it struggled to reach the target temperature we needed. It did everything else at a high level, and we highly recommend it. Now watch out when you go to shop for this because Instant Pot also has another Duo Pot. You want the Duo Evo, E-V-O. For a less expensive option, we also recommend the Crock-Pot 8-Quart Express Extra Large Pressure Cooker. It's priced a little more than half what you'd pay for our winner, around $77. Now in our testing, this model consistently produced excellent food. While its non-stick cooking pot didn't sear quite as well as the stainless steel pot in our winner, the non-stick did mean it was easier to clean. Now your biggest sacrifice that you're gonna make with this model is that its control panel is not that intuitive. It has a jumbled mess of buttons for unnecessary preset cooking functions. Just ignore that and it's a solid choice and our best buy.